especially with a rough start, um, falling behind eight nothing in the first game, but um, I guess the, the silver lining is the, the way to bounce back. That that is, and then finding three more pitchers, I thought McGovern and Fitzgerald and um, Dvorsky really pitched extremely well, putting zeros up at the end of that game. I mean, they gave us a shot to come back, and uh, we did start to make a comeback. It's just you know ran out of innings, but those three guys, I mean, they at least in, in, from a coach's vantage point. Uh, that that says, hey, give us more opportunities, and uh, let's see what we can do. And some, you know, maybe some, you know, more of a leverage type situation, not just a margin type game. But um, love seeing, you know, McGovern just deceptive and got some funk to his delivery. Fitzgerald with that quick tempo delivery and the attack with the fastball, the cutter, the slider, uh, and then Dvorsky with the fastball, the curveball, split, and all of them throwing strikes. Those three. That was that was really the biggest positive of um, you know that first game of the doubleheader. See those guys, um, you know, maybe solidify themselves as three more weapons for us in the bullpen. What was maybe the message between games after the way we lost the first game? Anytime you have a doubleheader, the best thing about that, where you drop game one, is it's just like amnesia. You just instantly forget flush it and move on. You, you learn the lessons you need to learn, but it's just, you, just, you know, you get something to eat, you change your jersey, and you get ready to come out with, and you make the adjustment. If you win game one, it's, you know, you stick with all the positive things that were working for you in game one and want to continue to build off of those. Uh, but our guys were, they, they were definitely um, pissed after game one. I mean, you could just see it that we had just, you know, come out and dug su uh, such a hole I don't think anyone, you know, with Darden on the mound could have predicted based on how he's pitched the last few weeks. We, you know, but that's baseball, and that happens some days, and some days pitchers are up, and they could, you know, any offense could take advantage of some mistake pitches, and, and they did. Um, but, um, you know, in between games, they made a quick adjustment and came out, you know, with a very, very focused look in their eye. See the, see the approach was executed, and they were putting really good swings on the ball all game. You talked about running out of innings in that first game on the offensive side. Do you think that kind of carried over in the game two offensively a little bit? Felt like it, yeah. I mean, you know, Blake hits the three-run jack in the ninth, and you know, I think everybody knew we were, we, you know, we just come back so many times, we played from deficit so many times, we knew it was coming. Um, but we had just, you know, eight runs, is, that's a big hole, uh, especially when their starting pitcher is holding us down. It's one thing to hold us down for three or, you know, two, three, four innings, but he was holding us down going into the seventh. Um, so, you know, it was just a big deficit to overcome. Uh, so I do, I think they, they, they feel they were angry because it was too little too late, but then it was also they were, you know, going to capture the, we won the final few frames and were able to carry that into game two. You mentioned uh, Crichton, he pitched in at the end of the first game, uh, then he goes three for four in game two. Um, Got to be nice to see that with uh, Will Taylor out for the rest of the regular season. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a group of, of outfielders that, you know, are all chomping at the bit with Jack Crichton and Tristan Bassetta and Nate Hall, Leighton Lackey, and, you know, they all are going to get opportunities, and that's just kind of it's what you want to see. You know, Bassetta did it earlier in the year and hits a couple of homers against Greensboro. And then carries it over through Duke and then Jack Crichton, big, you know, three hits today. Everything's hard. Um, so you just kind of want to see that spark. And then you just, you know, you just kind of kind of ride the hot hand. And um, so I expect we'll continue to do that. Same thing with Cooper Blauser and Jacob Jarrell and just finding some different combinations and still have some moving parts. And those are the adjustments we got to make now that forced to make these adjustments with the guys that are out, not just Will Taylor, but Chupo. And, um, so, you know, it's it's a good thing. It's it's not ideal at times, but this is a this is a perfect time of the year to have diversity like this as we're, you know, finishing the month of April and getting ready to head into May and June. I was going to ask you kind of about that. The uh, last 10 games, you've had the most adversity you've had all year. Your assessments of the last 10 games and how your team's handled 
these adversities? Yeah, I mean, we have, we just, we've, we've won a lot and we have not, we've learned a lot of lessons in when the outcome has still been in the win column. And it's a different lesson learned when you, when you, you know, when you lose. Um, and then it's, it's a completely different feeling as well when, you know, some of your mainstay players are out and out for extended periods of time. Um, and it just, you know, there's a, the default is to this, this damper that it kind of puts on the, on the mood and, you know, just cause, cause there's a high level of care in this room for each other. I mean, these guys genuinely care about each other. Um, so that's, that's part of it. You feel bad for your buddy. And, um, and then the other part is, you know, how are we going to make these adjustments? And so there is that, you know, that there's an adjustment period and we've been going through it the last two weeks and it's not been the, you know, it has not been the same level of baseball that we were playing against Duke and Florida State. I mean, it's, it's certainly, we've taken some hits, um, but we will go through it and battle and fight and compete. And, um, you know, I think it'll make us better because of it. I'm never happy because of injuries, but this time of year is totally fine to, you know, to get knocked down a little bit. And this, this whole thing, the adversity of the injuries and the losing and all of it will be part of the story. Um, but we're still finding ways. And we found a way to win the week this week and win the series, and even though it wasn't always pretty. How did you, or how well did you get to know the way Doug, Doug Hughes more and how special was it for you to be a part of that celebration for him today? It was a great celebration. Um, you know, what he's meant to Clemson baseball over the decades and the, you know, the generosity of the Kingsmore family and uh, the entire family. I mean, his sons, Mike and Sam, and um, just the whole family's philanthropic heart. And just it takes people like that to, to build programs and to help build athletic departments. And when you have those types of people that are willing to give seven figure contributions and pour into uh, the investment of, of young athletes and the resources for those young athletes, I mean, those people are worth their weight in gold. So uh, just uh, it's great to, to honor the life and celebrate the life of um, Doug Kingsmore and be there with his family and just certainly appreciate all his contributions through the years. Following up on Will's question, going into these last 15 games, what's the good that you've seen in this team and then where are some areas of improvement? Uh, oh boy, 15 games. Well, let's see, that goes back to, how, Hennessy, do the quick math on that. 15, 15 games left, going into the final stretch, oh, kind of where, yeah. more games to go, okay. Say it again, now I got it. <laughs> Going into the home stretch of the season, I'll put it that way. You're going to win them all with <laughs> where, I like that play. <laughs> where are some areas of improvement, and then what have you liked out of this team so far? Well, you know, from, let's break it down, pitching, defense, and, uh, and offense. From the pitching side, Tristan Smith coming back, um, that's big. And now, we, you know, now we're going to get him built back up. And, you know, so this will be going into this home stretch or this final stretch of the regular season with, you know, the, uh, you know, a rotation with him in it, that'll be good to see. Um, moved Austin Gordon to the bullpen and, you know, and start to work from back to front with some of these high leverage guys, you know, feel really good about, about that. Um, and then it's the, it's the outliers. Uh, it's the guys, the three guys I mentioned earlier that, you know, may have a role now that didn't really have a role before. So it's, it's still, you know, moving those pieces around and figuring out what fits best. Um, defensive, defensively, I think we're going to have some moving parts because Jimmy Overtop and Jacob Gerald can't catch every single game. Uh, they're going to share those duties, which moves first base around. With Will Taylor out, we're going to have, you know, play some matchups with left and right-handed pitching, um, you know, with the set of being a left-handed hitter and, you know, Crichton being a right-handed hitter, Lee Hall being a right-handed hitter. So I, you know, Jack Crichton can also play first base. Um, so we got some, you know, we got some things that we can still figure out. I think these 50, I guess my answer is these 15 games are, you know, going to be part of the figuring it out phase of what's going to make us the best team and figure out what, um, what's going to help us win the most. So uh, the last couple of weeks, it's seemed sometimes out of rhythm or out of sync just because we're we're trying to figure that out. So hopefully we get it figured out here in the next week or two and you know, 
get back into a good steady flow and steady rhythm uh, as we get into May and into June. Along those lines, you got a tough road stretch coming up at Georgia, at Louisville. Uh, Charlie Condon leading, leading the nation in uh, batting average and home runs, so that's, a, that's always a tough midweek game in Athens, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, they're a great team, and he's uh, he's he and the guy from Oregon State are kind of the front runners for the Golden Spike. So yeah, he may get the very Bond treatment. We may walk in with the bases loaded. Don't be surprised if we do. <laughs> We've already talked about it. So he's uh, he's a superstar, and he's having a superstar year. Anything else for coach?